Hi there, and welcome to another success story. Today, we're going to talk to Serena, who is currently doing the lion diet, and we're going to go into her journey and look at all the reasons why she became a carnivore. So hi, Serena. Hi, Stephen. How are you? I'm very well and very excited about this because I love people that are doing the lion diet. So yeah, I'm going to put my flag up the pole there and say I think it's great. So I always start with the same question to every single guest. How did you become carnivore? Um, Well, you and I have known each other for a long time, and I'm so grateful for your friendship, and I'm so glad that we're doing this. Um, So I will start by saying what led me to carnivore was, uh, and this is just kind of like halfway through the story, and then I'll go back, Um, but what what brought me to the lion diet was a weird post-COVID issue where things taste and smell rotten. So I had COVID in December of 2020, terribly sick. I was in bed for 11 days, um, lost my sense of taste and smell. And when that came back, it was very muted. I couldn't really taste and smell very many things. And then in March of 2021, one day I woke up and coffee smelled like a rotten skunk carcass somebody had lit on fire. It was one of the most horrible things I had ever smelled in my life. And I was a coffee drinker, so that was really difficult. Um, And then it progressed, it kept getting worse. And for about a week or two, I would notice something new every day that tasted or smelled like that. It was just terrible. I would I would get sick to my stomach. I would throw up from the smell. And it's like, you can't get away from it. Sometimes I wouldn't realize it till it was in my mouth already. And then it's too late. And then if I swallowed it, that smell was like right here all day. I could smell it coming from out of me. It was just terrible. I had to leave the house sometimes when somebody else was cooking. Um, It was just terrible. And so what I found after the first few weeks was that the only things that really tasted and smelled good were sweet things. So at that point, when I started this, I was juicing a lot. I was following kind of a Weight Watchers type plan just to lose like 10 or 15 pounds. Um, And I had done Weight Watchers multiple times over the years, but now suddenly I couldn't eat or drink a lot of the things that I was eating. I was, I was what most people, most Americans would consider. I had a very healthy diet is what most people would think. It was low fat, lots of fruits and vegetables, not a lot of fruit because of the carbs, but lots of vegetables. Like I said, the low fat meat, I didn't eat a lot of stuff out of a package. I mean, I was what most people would consider very healthy. And when I realized all I could eat was sweet stuff, that's what I ate because it was the only thing that really tasted good and satisfied me. And two of my daughters have a gluten-free baking business. So they make the absolute best uh, baked goods. So I was literally surviving on their baked goods for about two months. I was gaining weight. I felt miserable. And on my birthday weekend in May of 2021, I ate 20 cupcakes in 36 hours. That's where I was. They said, do you want cupcakes? And I said, double the batch. That's where I was in my life. As a binge eater and a carbohydrate addict, that's where I was. I also had been bulimic for 20 years. And then even after that stopped, I still would binge eat and then punish myself for you know, weeks on end for the binge you know, that I had done. But anyway, so I ate all those cupcakes. And so that was on a Saturday and Sunday. And I woke up on Monday morning and said, that's it. I was resolved. That's it. I'm done. I can't live like this anymore. It's like when an alcoholic hits rock bottom. And it really is the same for people who are not binge addict, binge eaters and not sugar addicts. They don't know that it really does feel the same. And I know what that looks like because my mom was an alcoholic. My dad was a drug addict. And so I know what hitting rock bottom looks like for somebody. And that's where I was. And so I said, that's it, no more. And then I realized that because of my post-COVID issue where I can't eat most things, that left me with like two things that I could eat. I couldn't eat fruits and vegetables because they tasted and smelled rotten. Um, And I wasn't going to eat sugar and carbs anymore. So that left me with a fresh hamburger off the grill with no cheese because I still couldn't eat cheese. And it had to be fresh. I couldn't refrigerate it and then warm it like the next day. It had to be fresh. So I was having to cook every day. And then there was like one kind of steak I could eat. I think it was ribeye at the time. Everything else smelled and tasted rotten. So I just started looking it up. Like, what does this mean? What am I? If, can I do this? Am I going to die? What's going to happen if I cut out, you know, the sugar since it's basically all I was eating. And now I can only eat these two pieces of meat. And um, I started doing research and that's how I found Laura Spath and Kelly Hogan and Bella and Sean Baker. And that's how I found all the people. And um, realized this was something that I could do. These people are thriving like this. And because I was resolved, I didn't have the setbacks that a lot of people have. I'm just kind of one of those people when I'm in, I'm all in. But when I'm cheating, I'm cheating all the time, you know. And so luckily for me, me, this was sustainable for me. And with my past eating disorder history and disordered eating and all of that, um, 
it was such a blessing. And it wasn't until like six months in that I realized I was well for the first time in my adult life. I mean, I, I bought my first diet pills when I was 12 and continued to diet probably every day of my life up until I started the carnivore diet, which I know has diet at the end of it, but it is not a diet. It's a way of eating. I'm not on the carnivore diet. I am a carnivore and it changed my life. It changed who I am. It changed the way I think. It changed the way I live my life. Um, it just has been amazing for me. And when I realized six months in that I was better, I just had a meltdown and I still tear up several times a week when I think about what has happened in my life just because I changed the way I was eating. And it seems so simple and like something that's so easy to do, but yet so few people actually do it. But, but it really did change who I am and change my life. Um, this is literally the first time in my life and I'm, I'm almost 50. I'll be 50 in May. When I started, I was 48. And um, it's the first time in my life that I've been at peace mentally and emotionally ever in my whole life that I can remember. So can you give me an example of what you mean by it changed? What, what's changed? Is it? Um, well, I don't have, yeah, well, I don't have brain fog anymore. So that's huge um, because so many people at my age are having lots of brain fog. You know, you have friends our age, you know, people have brain fog. Um, people can't remember things. And I joked with my friends for years in my earlier forties about how I thought I was having early onset Alzheimer's disease. And we would joke about it, but the truth is it was probably my food. Um, Alzheimer's isn't, you know, something that runs in my family or anything like that. And um, I really think that I was eating too many carbohydrates at the time. I was, I've always been an exerciser. I have always, I've run two marathons, several half marathons, a bunch of five Ks. I've always been an exerciser, you know, basically my whole life. And, um, and I never had the clarity that I have now and didn't feel as good then as I feel now. Um, but so no brain fog. Um, I can think of things faster. I homeschool my kids. So that part has become easier and I have more confidence there. Two years ago, I would not have done this. I would not have done what you and I are doing right now. Two years ago, even though I have a radio background, I grew up in broadcasting. I worked at multiple radio stations. That was my career before I started having children, but I don't think that I could have done this two years ago. So it's really given me a confidence I didn't have before. And I want to share it with the world because of the amazing benefits that I have had. I have never seen this kind of transformation in anybody and never felt this way myself before. Yes. And I, I, it does make you emotional. I'm the same as you. I can't believe for 50 odd years, I did the wrong thing. And I get cross that I, the truth was hidden from me. I get very angry that I went through colonoscopies and uh, many investigations and I was just getting fatter and yeah. pre-diabetic and wow. But yes, so I, I get what you're saying actually very much. So in the past, have you put on a lot of weight? Have you had any issues that um, you're glad to see the back of? Um, well, I will tell you that um, if there was ever a clear indicator of somebody with a carb addiction problem or a food addiction problem, it was me when I got pregnant with my first child, who is now 22. When I got pregnant with her, I was 27, I think, and I gained 80 pounds. So that's what happens when somebody who has always been on a diet stops being on a diet because they're pregnant. My husband is um, six one, and I weighed more than him. I'm five three, and I weighed more than he did the day we left for the hospital. Um, so I definitely had a problem with food. I did learn my lesson a little bit because with my next three children, I gained sixty, fifty, and then forty <clears throat> pounds. So that was the most overweight I had ever been. Um, if I wasn't like nursing or had just had a baby, but um, just in general, for me, I've always been chasing that last ten pounds. You know. Um, since our youngest was born, she's 14. So ever since then, like you always feel like I'd like to lose 10 more pounds. I'd like to lose 10 more pounds. So this is the first time that I ever have not felt that way. So I don't, I don't think I've ever been really overweight, but I was 10 or 15 pounds overweight multiple times over the last you know, 10 or 15 years. Um, and that 10 or 15 pounds tends to be the hardest to lose because it's the closest to your goal, you know? Um, so that gets a little bit harder for people. And so I would be frustrated a lot, but I was never, I was never very overweight, but I do know what it's like to want to lose weight and not feel like you can, or want to lose a lot of weight. Like when I was still 
you know, 70 pounds overweight when, you know, when I had our daughter and, you know, two weeks later I get on the scale and I really thought that most of that 80 pounds was going to go away when she was born. I mean, I really had no idea. I was pregnant in the back too. You know, like I did not know that it was going to be so hard to lose the weight. Um, it took me, it only took me about six months, but still I was younger. You know, it was easier than she was my only child. I was able to go to the gym, you know, pretty often. And so the weight came off easier than it did with the other children. But I was never like extremely overweight, but I do know what that feels like. And I know that it's hard and I know that it can be overwhelming for people. Yeah, so you pretty obviously were in the uh, thralls of a carbohydrate addiction by the sound of it. Um, do you feel that that's long gone now? And do you think carnivore has stopped the cravings? I do. It has completely stopped the cravings. I don't ever want any of those sweet things. And I think it's partially because I don't ever want to feel the way I felt ever. I never want to feel that way again. Um, and I don't feel restricted at all. Um, and I do think that carnivore is what I think it clicked in my brain. You know, it fixed that thing in my brain that made me want to binge because I don't want to binge on steak. I don't want to binge on chicken wings, although it's my absolute favorite. And that's the hardest part about the lion diet is I miss my chicken wings, but I don't want to binge on those. I want to eat until I'm nourished and satisfied and feel good and then stop until it's time for my next meal. I, I think people can binge on those things, but I think most people don't because they're so satisfying and nourishing and it just feels so good to give your body what it needs. Yes, and you just slipped in there that you're doing the lion diet. Could you just tell us a little bit about that for people that are not sure what that is? Sure, so for 20, almost 20 months, I was a carnivore. So that means all animal products. So lots of different meats, seafood, pork, chicken, beef, lots of different kinds of meats, and then some dairy, fat, like butter and tallow, and cheese, of course, because cheese. Um, but so it's just animal products. But for the month of January, I decided to do the lion diet, which is ruminant animals, salt and water. And I don't like lamb and the other ruminant animals. Um, and they're harder to get here in the US. So I have just been doing beef. And um, I feel really good. It's just beef, salt and water. So I'm varying my beef and the way I eat it. My favorite way to get through this month has been dehydrated thin slices of ribeye. It's like the best thing in the whole world. It is so good. Um, so I've been eating a lot of that. I have been eating a lot of the meat bars where you just kind of break up the loosely packed ground beef from the butcher and just kind of lay it in your air fryer and let it cook. Lots of hamburgers, lots of ribeye, lots of New York strip. And um, it sounds delicious and it is delicious. I did have a little bit of an aversion to the meat bars for a few days, but I'm over that now. And you know, I'm coming around the corner here I can't wait till February 1st to have some chicken wings. If I have to, if I'm being honest, that's the thing I miss the most. And um, so that'll be the first thing that I add back in and see how I feel. But I do know from past, from the past 20 months that I feel best on beef when I eat mostly beef, but eating only beef and making that the restriction for the month of January has been, you know, has felt a little bit restrictive. It's certainly more restrictive than carnivore feels. I don't feel restricted on, car on regular carnivore at all. Um, but I'm excited to add the chicken wings back in, and I hope I don't regret having cut all of these things out. I hope I don't have a hard time reintroducing them. I don't think that I will, um, but if I do have a problem, I definitely will ease off and wait a while to add certain things back in. Um, I'm just hoping it's not the wings. So what did you do the lion diet for? Was it a challenge someone set you or? Um, just kind of a challenge for myself. Um, I have a YouTube channel, and my partner Jess and I decided that we would both do the lion diet for the month of January. Um, just to kind of see, I have done the lion diet before. I did it last August, not even August of 2023, August, I mean, not 2022, but August of 2021, when I had only been carnivore for a few months, I actually did it. But I've always kept the butter in with my meat because I knew it was going to be hard to get enough fat in without butter. So I did always keep butter in the several times that I had done the lion diet before. And so this time I haven't done that. And it has been harder to get my fat in, keep my ketones up and my glucose down but I still feel like it will have been worth it. So you're measuring your glucose and ketones every day, are you? I am. Um, not every day, but a few times a week I am. And what sort of readings are you getting? Um, this morning, my glucose was 81, I think, which is decent. It's been lower than that, but it was decent. And my ketones were only 1.1, but I didn't add any fat yesterday. Um, yesterday, I only had, I think I had a couple of Wagyu burgers, Wagyu beef burgers yesterday afternoon. And then I had like three or four slices 
of the dehydrated ribeye right as it came out of the oven last night. And um, so there was no, there was not a lot of extra fat added at all. I didn't use any tallow or anything like that. So I think my fat was kind of low yesterday. So that could be why my ketones were lower. So what's the meal frequency there? Are you just grazing throughout the day when you're hungry or are you doing two meals a day? How, how are you doing it? Uh, typically two meals. I don't usually eat until about lunchtime, not because I'm fasting necessarily. I have a hard time with fasting. It can be a slippery slope for somebody with an eating disorder background, because if one day of fasting is good, two must be better. And if two is better, then three must be even better than that. And so I tend to go overboard when I fast. It can tend to be unhealthy for me mentally. So I try not to fast um, like intentionally too much. I do a 24 or 36 every now and then, sometimes a 48, but I do have to be a little bit careful because inevitably when I eat at the 48 hour mark, I think to myself, oh, I could have gone another 24 hours, you know, and then I feel bad that I eat. So I have to be careful with that. But in any case, I usually eat about two meals a day. So like lunchtime, I'm busy in the morning. We homeschool, you know, I have stuff to do. Um, and so I typically eat around lunchtime. And then if we, if my girls have basketball in the evening, I know it's going to be a late night and we won't be home at dinner time. So I eat at three, three thirty, four o'clock before we leave the house. And then I'm usually done for the day. So I'm typically doing like an 18, six or a, you know, 24, you know, window, um, it, for my eating, but there are times like today I ate breakfast and I hardly ever do that, but those dehydrated ribeyes were in the refrigerator calling my name and I had to have them. So I had those for breakfast and I haven't decided what the rest of the day looks like yet. I do have some burgers that need to be cooked. So I'm probably just going to do that today. Um, but either way, I think, you know, I'll be done by four. It'll probably still just be a two, a two meal day today. And if you were able to put yourself back to when you were like 20 and you were listening to yourself as an adult, would you believe the difference in you or would you not believe how you've changed? Uh, I wouldn't believe me. There is no way. And, and I don't blame other people for not believing me now. I definitely would not have believed myself, which could explain why my two older kids don't really believe me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it sounds, I think it sounds ridiculous. I have, I have, you know, engraved in them that they're supposed to eat fruits and vegetables. Um, and so it's not their fault that they can't let it go. It's me. Um, I would not have believed me. And I don't blame those of you that are watching that don't believe Stephen and I, um, that it can be life-changing and that it can feel so good and that you can be so healthy eating these delicious, nutritious, satiating foods and not gain weight from it and um, love yourself even more, you know, than you do now. So I definitely wouldn't have believed my, I would have thought I was crazy. Yes. I, I've done hundreds of these, by the way, and I still get comments saying, I can't work. It can't be that good. So uh, mm -hmm. what proof do you need? What more proof? But anyway, it doesn't matter about that. What people think um, it is working for many, many people, hundreds and thousands of people. So when you're not on the lion diet, is your meal frequency different? What, what sort of things would you be eating? What's your normal day when you're not doing lion then? Um, I would say normally it's probably about two meals also, but it kind of depends. It's really funny because I'm addicted to cheese too. I'm addicted to dairy for sure. That's definitely a problem for me. I hope that it doesn't become more obvious by doing the lion diet. I hope that I can add it back in sparingly, but if I'm using cheese, the truth is I can eat more. It's really a bizarre phenomenon. Um, if I have eggs for breakfast with cheese, I'll have a burger for lunch or two burgers for lunch with cheese. And then for dinner, I'll have something else with cheese. Um, so I think that I can eat more when I'm having dairy. That is something that I have noticed. Um, but a typical day for me with skipping breakfast, which is my norm, would be for lunch. I would typically have chicken wings. That's one of my absolute favorite things. Takes me back to my childhood, my mom. And I used to go to a wing place, you know, in the evenings, it was happy hour. I didn't know that's why we were going. She was drinking, I was eating wings, um, but I used to love to go and get those hot wings. So, and then I didn't have them for probably 20 or 25 years because they're bad for you because they're fattening. Um, and so I didn't eat them. And so it just kind of takes me back to that. It is also the only time I use a condiment. I do use a little bit of hot sauce on my wings, just because that's how I like them. It's my one thing that I do. I don't even drink coffee anymore. So it's literally my one thing, um, but I don't always use it. Maybe once or twice a week, I have a little bit of hot sauce on my wings. Um, and so that would be my lunch. And then typically for dinner, I would have a steak and some beef bacon maybe, or a burger with some beef bacon. Um, sometimes I'll make like a big rack of pork ribs that I buy them at Sam's and it takes up like a whole big sheet in the oven. And I'll just cover that with foil and make that. And then we'll have that, you know, for several days. Sometimes I'll make a beef roast to eat 
um, for dinner and then we'll have that for a couple of days. So typically at least one meal is beef and the other one is probably chicken most of the time or like I'll eat just a bunch of bacon for like a lunch slash breakfast kind of meal and then still have the burgers or whatever for dinner. I typically, I do a lot of batch cooking. Like we'll cook 20 burgers all at once, eat what we want and then put the rest in the fridge. And the next day we'll cook a bunch of steaks and then we'll put what's left in the fridge. And then the next day we'll make the ribs and put the rest in the fridge. And so typically I only have to cook like that three or four times a week. And then we just eat what's in the refrigerator for the rest of the week. Yeah, that's a good plan actually. Do you supplement mm -hmm. at all? No, not at all. I do take a little bit of vitamin D when I remember to do it because my vitamin D tends to run really low. Um, there was one time several years, five years ago, maybe, where even in the summertime, I went and had my D checked after sitting out in the sun in Maine for three or four days a week. I was getting lots of vitamin D and my vitamin D was only 16. It was dangerously low. I was a miserable wreck. I was crying all the time. I was a brain fog. I couldn't remember it. I was, I was in a terrible place because of it. Um, and so my vitamin D does tend to run low, even with supplementing. There have been times where it's only been 40. Um, but this last time when I went after having been carnivore for, it was either nine or 10 months, my vitamin D looked really good. It was like 65 or something. And that was without really supplementing, but I do try to supplement a little. My doctor says he would like it to be about a hundred at this point for people, um, which is pretty high, but, um, I don't mind taking just a little bit of vitamin D when I remember to do it. I don't feel stressed about it. It's certainly not going to give me any negative effects. And, um, so that's really the only thing ex with the exception of in the evening, I do take a supplement called ZMA. For women about my age who are starting to go through, you know, some changes with their cycles, I'm starting, you know, like perimenopause. Um, and this supplement, a friend told me about it about a year and a half ago, I started to have some hot flashes. And she said, try taking this at night before you go to bed, it'll help you sleep and stop the hot flashes. And sure enough, I don't think I've had a hot flash since I started taking it and I'm almost 50 and I'm in that stage of life. So I think that's pretty awesome. So I don't take that because I feel like I need it for the carnivore diet. I take it for other reasons. And um, I'm about to run out and I haven't ordered more. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I don't know what think, will happen. We'll see. Uh, I think with the vitamin D, if you're on a low fat diet, it's a fat soluble vitamin. So it does tend to need fat in your system to actually yeah. absorb and, and uh, synthesize. So, yeah, um, I'll ask you now because otherwise I'll get told off. If you could send me an email of these the uh, supplement okay. you're taking for your hot okay. flushes, because people will ask. Will. Um, yes. That'd be great. Um, yeah, so I, I think it's pretty interesting. You mentioned that your children are not 100% on board, but your is your partner? Um, my husband is mostly 100% carnivore. He does on occasion, holidays, family barbecues with friends or, you know, his family, people just kind of eat what's there. But typically he has been carnivore. It'll be um, a year at the end of March, I believe. And he really likes it. He runs really fast when he's eating like this. He feels really good. He lost quite a bit of weight. Um, he is still conflicted <laughs> about all of the information. It's hard, you know, it's hard to imagine that we can eat like this and feel the way we do. Um, but, but he does it and he, you know, does it graciously and it makes it a lot easier for me. Um, our two younger kids are 14 and 16. And they, they aren't low carb, but we try to not have a lot of processed foods. I mean, they eat some things like tortilla chips, um, but for the most part, they eat the meat that we're eating and then they add something to it. So they always know what's in the refrigerator. They always know what they can have. And they're definitely doing better than they were before. But like I said, we were always like one of the healthy families. Like we didn't eat out a lot. We didn't eat a lot of junk food. My kids had never had microwaved popcorn until they were like, I think my oldest was maybe, 13 or 14 when they had their first thing that they could remember of having microwaved popcorn. Um, there was something else the other day. One of them was talking about saying they can't believe they had never had before. I don't know, like those, um, those hostess Christmas tree cakes that are shaped like a Christmas tree. You know, somebody was giving one of them a hard time recently about, I can't believe you've never had one of those Christmas trees, you know? So, so we were always, you know, kind of one of those healthier families. And I'd like to think that they still are. Um, but in my head, they're not because they're eating fruits and vegetables. <laughs> But at least they don't need a lot of junk. Yes. And and you're exercising, I, I think you said. You still exercise. Yes. What do you do? I am. Um, I run sometimes. Um, you know, it's really easy to get out of the routine when the weather's bad for a week. You know, when you kind of get into the routine and then the weather's bad for a week. And then the next week, you really don't want to wake up early. And I like to sleep. I love to sleep. 
Um, so it gets a little bit harder this time of year, but um, our normal schedule is to run two or three times a week. I don't go out and run when you and I had spoken, you know, a year and a half ago, I was going running. I was running three or four miles. And through our conversations, I realized that I didn't really need to run like that. Um, so now my husband and I go together, he runs and I walk for the first like mile or mile and a half. And when I see him coming back at me, I turn around and when he passes me, I sprint 20 seconds and walk 40 seconds and sprint 20 seconds and walk 40 seconds until we get to the end of the trail. And then I try to lift weights two or three times a week. So you like the sprint intervals? I think so. It, um, you know, I've always hated running. I mean, I've hated every step of running. Even when I did marathons, I couldn't believe I was doing it. I've always hated running. And so for me, sprinting is easier because I can count down the 20 seconds and then stop for 40 seconds. And I know it's only 20 seconds. So that really does help me a lot um, mentally. And I think that the sprinting has helped me. I think it does more for my body than the, you know, longer steady state cardio does. Absolutely. And, and have you any other hacks that you are trying? Cold therapy, red light therapy, anything like that? I take a lot of hot baths, which I know is a form of biohacking. Um, I was for a while after I would take a hot bath, I would drain the water and then I would fill the tub with cold water and get back in. And that uses a lot of water though. And I don't have, I don't have, a, you know, like an ice bath. Um, I was thinking, funny you should mention it. I was thinking today, that I would maybe fill up the tub with cold water and dump our ice tray into it and see if I could get in. I haven't, I haven't completely committed to that yet, but in the fall, I was telling myself this winter, I'm gonna go outside for a walk every day for 20 minutes in a short sleeve shirt, no matter what temperature it is, I'm just gonna do it. And then winter comes and I'm like, you know, sitting around in a blanket all long. I hate winter, it's so hard for me. Um, so I would love to do more things like that. Um, but I don't have access to a, you know, cold bath. I know I could just do it in my bathtub and we'll see, maybe I'm going to try it today. I was doing that for several months last year. I did that. Um, I'm just not sure the cold bath thing is for me. I like the hot bath, but um, that's about all I do at this point. Um, I would like to get into some more of the biohacking stuff, but, um, but I just don't do it yet, but I should, I know I should. Well, yeah, if you're thriving, maybe you shouldn't. I mean, if you're enjoying your life, I mean, kind of always about enjoying your life, isn't it? And just thriving. Um, yeah. So I, I tend to do short, sharp interviews. I tend to do like 30 minutes. So is there any final thoughts that you've got for people watching? Well, I think if you're on the fence or you're sitting around and you're thinking that you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and you've tried everything else you can think of, why not give it a shot? There are many, many of us that have said that it works. Uh, and there are lots of people that will say, oh, I could never, I could never give this up. I could never, you know, fill in the blank. I could never do what you're doing. And I just think to those people, I think, get out of your own way. You're in your own way. Get out of your way. Stop stopping yourself from being the best version of you. It really is not that hard to make this decision and stick with it. And I think you're going to be better off if you do that. You just have to be committed. You have to be resolved and you have to look at it one day at a time. You don't look at it like, how can I do this for the rest of my life? Or how can I do this for a whole year or even a whole month? You have to start with today and say, today, I'm only going to eat meat, eggs, and cheese. And do that today and enjoy it. Enjoy the full fat cheese you've told yourself you can't have. Enjoy the ribeye that you've told yourself you can't have all these years. Enjoy the eggs with extra yolks with a little bit of cheese on them and love that and nourish your body. And tomorrow you're probably not going to feel great because you're going to start having car withdrawals. So you really have to give it a good two weeks to get past that. But the main goal is to focus on one day at a time in the beginning, because the beginning is hard. Focus on one day at a time and reach out to me, reach out to Stephen, reach out to some of the carnivores in the community that are there to help you. We're all available to ask questions and help you get over that hump of the first two weeks or month. And it, it just might change your life. So I think if you're on the fence or you think this is crazy, don't tell us you think it's crazy. Don't bash us for it. Try it and see what you think. It's certainly not going to hurt you to try something for 30 days and see how you feel. Well, that's marvelous. So finally, Serena, if people want to get hold of you, how can they get hold of you? You can find me at serena.carnivore on Instagram. On Facebook, it's just kind of a repeat of Instagram, but it's actually Serena Music there. 
It's the same picture as I have on Instagram. And then you can find me at the Carnival Revolution. We have an Instagram page and a YouTube channel. And we've been sharing our lion diet there as well as interviews and some cooking videos. So that's Carnival Revolution on YouTube. So please find us there and like and subscribe. We'd love to have you. And then you can also find me. We have actually started a Mighty Network too with some group coaching and some people that you'll love to see, some guest speakers. Um, and that's at Carnival Revolution on the Mighty Network. So feel free to message me and I can give you all of the information for that. And if you enjoyed this video, then I think you should watch this one about this success story because I think you'll like that as well.